guys, it's Jessica from Peace Out Books, and today I'm here with another historical romance video. You guys loved my last historical romance video, and it makes me so excited because that's literally all I want to read. I think it's because we're getting into, like, November, December, and at this time last year, I was in reading all the Bridgerton books, and all I wanted to do was read historical romances, so I feel like going into the cold season and the winter season, all I want to do is read romance. I know we're, like, still near the beginning of fall, but because Halloween is almost here and over, all I want to do is read historicals. So I have my favorite social class different historical romances. You guys know if you've been watching me, I love the social class difference romance. One of them is very wealthy and the other one is not. One of them has a title or from a titled family. The other one might be a servant or not and they are not titled and sometimes they are like self-made people which were still very looked down upon at the time but I love it when they still fall for each other because a lot of times they're not supposed to be together. Like if we have a duke, he needs to marry a well titled woman and sometimes he falls for someone who's not and I just love that trope so much so I have a lot to get to so I will go ahead and get started. The book that inspired this was The Duchess Hunt by Lorraine Heath. I just listened to this book on audio. It's on my weekend reading vlog that I recently posted. I love this book so much. It's similar to another book on this list that you guys know I love where it's the trope where the duke needs a wife and I feel like they always start out that way because the duke needs to have heirs so that his heirs can take over the dukedom like when he dies, right? So it's always the goal of of the people who are titled to have heirs to carry on the title and he needs an heir and his assistant is Penelope like he calls her Petty Peace which is her last name and she has been his assistant for a couple years and they are work really well together she helps him a lot with his business ideas and they are both secretly pining for each other and it is I love mutual pining books I feel like we don't have those enough where they both really like each other but no one does anything about it and it's just it's so good and in this one they both really like each other but neither of them will do anything because he's a duke and she's not and they both have a secret that does come out at the end and I love this book so so much she has to help him find a duchess and so she has a list of contenders like he put an advertisement out I think and everybody sent in their letters so she read through them narrowed it down and now she has to attend balls with him so she can talk to the women and see if they're right for him or not and you guys, this one was so good. I love this so much. I gave it five stars. What I've been saying is I absolutely adore Lorraine Heath and she can do no wrong for me. So I'm excited to go back and read book one, but this one definitely, she feels like she's not good enough because she's supposed to find this well-bred titled lady to marry the Duke and he obviously needs someone like that and it's just amazing. Then one where it's actually swapped where we have a higher class woman and a working class man is The Beauty and the Blacksmith by Tessa Dare. This is actually a novella and it is so just sweet. The hero's a blacksmith and the heroine keeps on like purposely breaking her jewelry so that she can go and visit him and have him fix her things. And so that's all I really want to say about it since it is a novella, it's so short, I don't want to say too much more about the plot, but they obviously end up falling for each other, but he's not good enough to be with her, but it, it was really sweet. So definitely check this one out. You don't have to read it like in order with the series whatsoever. It's like book 3.5, I think, but you can raise the standalone if you want a cute novella with this trope. Then I have The Duke Buys a Bride by Sophie Jordan. This one I think is book two or three. I think this is book three in the series. And this one, our hero like has a drunken night out and he is a duke and he comes across this woman being auctioned off in this square. And he's like, why is this woman being auctioned off? He's like horrified by what's happening. And so he ends up buying her. Little does he know he's buying her to marry him as a wife. She's being auctioned off as a wife. Her father passed away. So she, I don't remember how it works. I thought she married her father's friend in order to be like protected, but she's really just been like another servant in the household. She's never really been like a wife. They've never consummated the marriage or anything and maybe that's why she's allowed to be like married off to someone else and so now he's finally like you know what well I don't want you anymore so we're gonna bid you off to the highest bidder and you can be their problem now and so she is and he the duke ends up buying her and the duke is like I'm not marrying her but he signs all the papers and so technically they're like supposed to be married and he feels bad so he ends up taking her to be a servant at one of his estates and on the way there they fall for each other. It's adorable how there's traveling in here and how he is like adamant that he's not in love with her but then they're like well why do you want her to serve in your state so badly and they start falling for each other and it's great I really like this one one of my absolute favorites that I'm super excited to read book two for is the Duke Heist by Erica Ridley this one has a found family aspect and it's just amazing and our heroine is actually part of like a family of thieves and so our hero is a Duke and he actually has this painting that they believe was her her like adoptive fathers and he just recently passed away and so her and her siblings were all kind of misfits and they all have their own different 
different kind of, uh, what is the word, like tricks and skills. She is great at like sneaking into places and stealing things. We have someone who is great with voices, disguises, animals, like all these things. And so our heroine decides to go and try to steal the painting back and steals the Duke instead on accident. And it's so funny. And then our Duke is just like really lonely and it's amazing how he finds a family with them and they found a family with each other. And this one is just so fun. And then the next book is actually the woman who was betrothed to the Duke and her sister. So it is this sapphic romance and I'm super excited for it. But I just loved all the characters in here and she's, she's lower class. She's from like a family of adopted misfits and he's a Duke. So it's great. Then we have another one that technically is different social class, but not like money wise. And that's the Prince of Broadway by Joanna Shoup. I just finished listening to this audiobook. I had read book one and then I skipped straight to book three. This one, he owns a casino. And so society really looks down upon him because he's kind of seen as a criminal and he's like been arrested before, but he has like the police in his pocket and stuff like that. And our heroine is the second daughter of the three sisters that this series follows. And her father's very wealthy. It's in America, so they're not titled, but she's very wealthy. And she wants to open a casino. And so she b b confronts our hero and is like, teach me how to have a casino. Cause like you own one, it's very successful and I want one too. And he's like, no. And he's actually plotting to get revenge on her father. And so they fall in love and it's amazing. And they end up slowly falling for each other. And she's trying to open this casino. Cause she's determined to have a place for women who can gamble. And she gets in a little trouble cause she's gambling too and going places she's not supposed to. And it's so much fun. And obviously her dad is like, you cannot be with that man. He has like rivals with him and he's like a criminal and it was great. Then we have How to Forget a Duke by Vivian Lorette. This one is a amnesia romance and our heroine's actually a matchmaker. She is from a family of matchmakers. They help people find brides and people to marry and so this Duke needs a woman to marry. He's like, it's finally time. I need to have an heir, blah, blah, blah. And our heroine ends up losing her memory and like washing up on shore to his estate because she was like on her way there. So she has to recover at his estate and so it's kind of has the caretaking trope and she has to spend time there because she needs to have recover her memory and so she starts falling for him and actually stays like in the duchess's chambers and it's a lot of fun how they always had to be around each other and it's super cute, but she is low class and she knows that he needs someone well-bred and high class in order to marry because he is a duke, so that does come into play here. But I love the amnesia trope, so I love this book a lot. Another Tessa Dare that follows this trope that's amazing is Any Duchess Will Do. This one is further along in the Spindle Cove series. I think it's like book four, but this one, our hero's a duke and his mother is the one who is like, we need to find you a wife. You're gonna get married. I'm taking you to Spindle Cove where all the spinsters live and you're gonna pick someone to marry. So to prove his mother wrong, he picks the barmaid. And so she is swept into London and is trying to be trained to be a duchess. So she has to figure out how to talk properly and act properly and come out into society properly because his mother's determined to make her his wife. And they stripe up a bargain that she has to try her like worst to being a duchess and so that they can get it called off so that then she can get money to support her family at home. And it's so good because I ended up falling in love and I love that whole woman to train to be a duchess but then she's gonna try to sabotage it because she struck a deal with him and he falls for her anyways and I love a meddling mother in romances so this one was really good. Another favorite of mine amnesia trope is Once More My Darling Rogue by Lorraine Heath. This one is kind of different social class even though he is actually wealthy. He's a self-made man and so self-made men in historical London England time period they're really looked down upon. That's why a lot of them do go to America and then if Americans come over they're looked down upon as well but this one he's a self-made man and she comes from a family of wealth and she's very mean to him. She's a, Lisa from Remarkably Lisa always says this like Sharpay from High School Musical. She's just spoiled and rich and does what she wants and so they don't have a great relationship. He finds her like washed up in the Thames with no memory of who she is. So she was obviously attacked and he brings her to his house to like recuperate, figures out she doesn't have her memory and decides to play a game with her and say she's his maid. And so she has to spend a lot of this book as his maid in like helping him bathe and like cooking and cleaning and she's like, this doesn't feel right. And then she goes shopping and she like has the urge to like spend money and she doesn't know how to save it. And it's just like so funny how she's like slowly putting the pieces together, but they're falling for each other in the process. And it's amazing. Should he have lied to her? No, but it's a really great romance. And they decide like they learn to look past one another's like 
titles in life and oh, it was so good. Then I have A Duchess a Day by Charis Michaels. This is a bodyguard romance. Our heroine is supposed to marry a duke and because she's from a wealthy family but she doesn't want to and so she decides to track down women who she thinks would make a good duchess for him and it's supposed to be like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs so they all have like characteristics of the Seven Dwarfs so it's really funny in that aspect but our hero needs to make sure she marries the duke because he has a lot riding on the fact that this goes well with pertaining to his like family and stuff and so it's his job to like make sure she gets married because he's so he ends up being her bodyguard she can't run away and they end up falling for each other but he's like I need you to marry someone else in order to get what I need so I can't be with you and this the angst is so good and this was so much fun then I have Too Wild to Wed by Eloisa James this is in the Wilds of Lindell Castle series and this one our hero and heroine were actually engaged and then she jilts him and like humiliates him and he goes off and he comes back and she is now the governess for his family and he's back in town and back in her life and so they had to be around each other a lot and it slowly unravels what drew them away from each other and what had happened and this one's really great so they it's a second chance romance but she's also the governess for the family and so she's working for the family so it's definitely social class there but I enjoy this one a lot I saved my favorite for last because I talk about this book all the time and that is if the Duke demands by Anna Harrington this is another one where it's the heroine trying to help the hero find someone I guess it's just perfect because I started out with that trope and I'm ending with that trope but our heroine's been in love with his brother and she grew up next door but she's like more like I think on like the farm or something next door so she's grown up with them but she's definitely lower class and he is a duke and she decides she wants to seduce the younger brother and so it's a masquerade ball she goes to what she thinks is his room starts seducing him they both realize what's happening and they're like oh my gosh no wait this is a mistake even though they kind of liked what was about to happen and she's horrified and he's like you know what I need a bride because it's about time he takes his job very seriously as a duke because of the circumstances around his father's death he feels responsible he wants to be a good duke so he's like find me the perfect duchess like I need someone to marry who is responsible and reasonable and can take the job and give me heirs and she's like fine and he said I'll help you win over my brother if you take the job and um they strike up that bargain but they fall in love with each other in the process and it's so good. I love it. He's trying to be all serious and take responsibility because of what happened with his dad so he's got to find the perfect duchess which is not her but they fall for each other anyways. And those are my favorite social class difference romances. Let me know if you have any more recommendations below and if you want a second version of this video I have a lot more that I could talk about but those are just the ones that popped into mind first. So make sure you give me recommendations because I do love this trope and let me know if you want any other historical romance recommendation videos and what kind of tropes you want. Let me know. As always thank you so much for watching and have a good day.